This home pregnancy test is a simple and inexpensive way to get an important readout, specifically telling us whether a woman is pregnant or not pregnant, using urine as a test fluid. If you wanted to make a different measurement, for example, doing a blood test to, to tell whether someone had antibodies in their blood and whether they were presumed to be resistant to the coronavirus, you could make one using a similar technique. It's a simple device, but it's a device that has to basically work every time. And understanding how it works requires that we understand capillary flow through porous media. This is an analog lateral flow assay for human chorionic gonadotropin because HCG is elevated in women who are pregnant. It also can be elevated in men, and if you're a dude and you pee on a pregnancy test and it comes up positive, unfortunately it means you probably have some sort of testicular cancer. Now the way this works is that you take the lid off and then you pee on this region that's called the sample pad. Then you wait a couple of minutes and you look in this detection zone. And in this detection zone, if there are two different red lines, that means that you're pregnant. If there's only one line, that means that the device is working and that you're not pregnant. This pregnancy test might look simple, but what's going on inside it is actually rather complex. So if we take this system and we crack it open, and we look at what's inside, we see that there are a couple of different components. In fact, there are four different components on the inside that are held together by the compression of this plastic outer layer. If we pull that and look at these individual parts, we see here there's the sample pad. And the sample pad actually sticks out of the device, and this is the part that you pee on. The urine on this is wicked upstream, but the sample pad is also impregnated with buffers and salts and sugars and surfactants. And that control the pH and the salinity, and it also helps other materials dissolve in this fluid. So that's wicked upstream, where it impinges on this conjugate release pad. And the conjugate release pad is usually made out of glass fibers. You can see a little red strip here, and the red strip is a bunch of gold nanoparticles that are conjugated to antibodies against human chorionic gonadotropin. They're red because they're about 40 nanometers in size, and the fact that they're conjugated to these antibodies mean that these nanoparticles will stick to any human chorionic gonadotropin that's in the urine. So now the urine with the salts and the buffers and the sugars and the surfactants and the nanoparticles are all wicked upstream into this detection strip. And this detection strip is typically made out of nitrocellulose. The nitrocellulose here has two different invisible chemical strips. Downstream, you see what's called the control line. And the control line is a strip of antibodies that will adhere to those, those antibodies that are on the gold nanoparticles. And that's independent of what's in the urine. So no matter what, the red nanoparticles, when they move along the system, should be trapped on the control line. And that line basically is proof that the pregnancy test itself is working. The second line, the test line, which is a little bit upstream, now has antibodies against HCG. And this works as a sandwich assay, and it's sort of like an Oreo cookie. An Oreo cookie has two different chocolate wafers, and then there's uh, a sugary, creamy center inside, and it's all stuck together. Here, we have a location where these gold nanoparticles that started out here will stick to that line, but only in the presence of human chorionic gonadotropin in the urine. That basically sandwiches together the two antibodies and causes a second red line to form. And if that red, second red line forms, that means that you're pregnant. If we continue to move in this direction, we'll see here an absorbent pad that's typically made out of cellulose. The reason for this absorbent pad is because it makes this test more reproducible and more sensitive. And the reason is because the urine that's being pulled through gets pulled onto this absorbent pad. And in fact, the fluid continues to be pulled through this system as long as we're running it, so for three to five minutes. If we didn't have this absorbent pad, what would happen is the urine would get wicked into the system, it would fill the detection strip, and then it would stop. And the total amount of urine that would pass through the system would be very, very small. But by adding this absorbent pad, that urine continues to get pulled through the system. Therefore, we can sample a larger amount of urine and make the system much more sensitive. The final thing you see here is this little tablet-looking thing. And this is just a desiccant. This test has to work even if it's in a human environment. And the reagents have to be stored well even if it's stored in a human environment. 
And so this desiccant here basically just makes sure that if the system is exposed to humidity, that it doesn't ruin the reagents. Now it looks a, bit, a little bit like a pill, and in fact there are some Reddit threads you can find that tell you that that's actually plan B, but let me assure you, if you take a pregnancy test and you get two strips, do not respond by eating this thing. Instead, please go to the doctor. Okay, so let's show how this works. I have a pasture pipette that's filled with water with some yellow food coloring. I'll drop it on this sample pad, and then we'll see how this goes. So you can see here as the urine flows through the system, it pulls those red nanoparticles along with it, and that original red strip is absent. And now the fluid wicks through the system. You can see downstream that we're starting to form a clear red line, and that's the control line. Upstream of that is the test line, and we would be getting that second line if this were urine with HCG, but instead this is just water with yellow food coloring. Now you can imagine that when this device is clamped in between these two different plastic components, the physical connection between these different systems is more robust. If you pull it apart, you find that systems like this run much more inconsistently. But now you can see here that there's a clear red line, and that red line is one that can be viewed through this viewing port on the pregnancy test. If we have a glass capillary, and we dip that capillary into water, that water will be drawn into the capillary. And that's because of the pressure difference that's generated as the curvature of the water interface on the glass leads to a lower pressure right at the interface. So if I hold this capillary up to this pool of water, you can see that the colored water is drawn up into the glass. That's because the pressure at the water, which is at atmospheric, is higher than the pressure at the top at the interface, where the pressure is being decreased by the curvature of the interface. Absorbent materials like this have a low contact angle, and because of that, if we take this absorbent material and put it into water, we can see that the water is drawn into the absorbent paper. And that's because the contact angle of water in this paper is less than 90 degrees. It means there's curvature at the interface of the water as it's being pulled into the material, and the pressure of the liquid at the interface inside the absorbent material is significantly lower than atmospheric. There's therefore a pressure-driven flow that pulls the fluid up into the system. From a fluid mechanical standpoint, everything about this device is all about the fluid mechanics associated with having urine being added to one part and having the urine move through the system, going to specific places at specific speeds and at specific times. And that's all about controlling the capillary action of these materials. When we add urine at this end, the urine is wicked into the material because all of these surfaces have contact angles that are below 90 degrees. Now what a contact angle describes is the angle of the condensed phase if we put a drop of water on a surface. And what it really tells us is what's the interfacial energy associated with air connecting to that surface relative to the interfacial energy associated with water connecting to that surface. If there's more excess energy associated with air interacting with that surface, then the lowest energy state of the system is going to be for water to cover it. If, on the other hand, there's a lot more energy associated with water covering this surface, then the lowest energy component of the system is going to be to have air displace the water and have air make all the contact. In the case of cellulose or glass or nitrocellulose, all of these are low contact angle materials. And what that means is that if we ever have an air-water system, the lowest energy state of the system has water in contact with those surfaces. When we add urine to this system, the urine is drawn into it because if we look at the different pores of this system and think of them as being capillaries, there's curvature associated with the interface of the water. And this is simply because the equilibrium of the contact angle and the energies associated with all the interfaces forces there to be an angle in between the water and the air on the surface of this system. That angle then prescribes a specific curvature in a pore. 
and the curvature in the pore via the, Lapla the Laplace pressure relation tells us what is the pressure drop across the interface. When we put urine into this system, as the urine moves and is wicked into the system, if we zoom in and we look at individually at the individual pores, we'll find that the urine interface is curved. And that means that the atmospheric pressure of the air is much larger than the pressure inside the fluid. So the interfacial energy and the curvature that results from that leads to a low pressure region right at that interface between the water and the air. If you assume that the reservoir is at atmospheric pressure, that means there's a pressure gradient that can push fluid through the system. If we took a paper towel, for example, we would see this because if we dipped the paper towel into some water, we would see that the contact angle of paper towels are low, that's basically made out of cellulose, and that means that the water would get wicked in. Similarly, if we took a glass pipette and we dunked that glass pipette into the water, again, we see that the water is drawn up because the contact angle of water on glass is low. If we want to quantify capillary flow, it's easiest to look at a circular capillary like this one. So this is a small circular capillary with a circular cross section. When the fluid is drawn up into this system, if we look at the top, the top surface has a uniform curvature. And that curvature can lead us to quantify the pressure drop between the air that's just above it and the fluid that's just below it. The exact curvature is then related to the contact angle of the liquid on the surface. And the contact angle of the liquid on the surface is a function of the three surface tensions between the solid and the liquid, between the liquid and the gas, and between the gas and the solid. Putting all these things together allows us to quantitatively evaluate what is the difference in pressure between the air and the liquid in the system as a function of the contact angle and the diameter of the tube. And what that tells us is that this pressure difference is largest when the contact angle is very low, which is what we see in water on cellulose or nitrocellulose or glass fibers. And it's also maximum when the diameter is as small as possible, because when the diameter is small, that leads to a very small radius of curvature, and that leads to a very large Laplace pressure difference across the interface. Now, for our pregnancy test, what we care about is at what rate does the fluid move through this system if it's moving horizontally and not controlled by gravity. And that's described by the Washburn equation. What the Washburn equation tells us is that as fluid is uh, added to a system like this, as it moves horizontally, it moves with a square root of t dependence. So we can see that it moves quickly at first and then it slows down over time. Now the reason for that is that in a uniform material, the pressure drop at the interface that's prescribed by the curvature of this fluid is constant. So that doesn't change with time. However, what's happening is as this fluid is moving through a larger and larger distance of material, now the viscous losses in the system are proportional to the length. So when we first start, it moves through at a velocity that theoretically is infinite because there's no viscous losses to fight through. But then as we move through more and more length of the system, now that same pressure difference has to pull fluid through a longer and longer distance. When we work through the math, that tells us that fluid will move through the system proportional to the square root of t, and also as a function of the contact angle and the pore size. That allows us to pick the materials that we use in a pregnancy test like this, so that the urine moves through the system in just a couple minutes, which is about the longest length of time that anyone will wait for their pregnancy answer. So, a pregnancy test like this uses capillary action to take urine, move it all the way from the sample pad to the detection zone, repeatedly and reliably. In so doing, it pulls up salts, buffers, sugars and surfactants and mixes that material with gold nanoparticles and then it brings those gold nanoparticles into contact with two different invisible lines of chemicals that provide a readout that tell us whether the woman is pregnant or not. It works without power and it works in a variety of different conditions. The manufacturing is very simple. It's basically just a couple of different pieces of paper or glass fiber that are pressed together with an inexpensive plastic housing. But it works basically every time, and it has to work every time because of the importance of this test. Physically, what's drawing the fluid through the system is the pressure difference called the Laplace pressure. And that Laplace pressure is associated with the surface tension of a water-air interface and the fact that it's curved when that water is inside a porous material with a low contact angle.